Welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the second and final video in IB Biology Topic 4, Ecology, where we will be looking at carbon cycling and climate change. In our first IB Biology Topic 4 video, we introduced the idea of nutrient cycling and how it improves nutrient availability to make an ecosystem sustainable. From this, the IB expects you to know how carbon is recycled through the carbon cycle. Let's look at this now. It begins with autotrophs, i.e. plants, which reduce atmospheric CO2 concentration by taking CO2 in and carrying out photosynthesis to form lipids, carbohydrates and carbon compounds, known as carbon fixation. However, aquatic plants cannot access the air. So what occurs here? Well, since CO2 is soluble, it dissolves in oceans to form H2CO3. This dissociates to form H plus and HCO3 minus, the latter of which can then be used by aquatic autotrophs for photosynthesis. Regardless of the location of the autotroph, both can later release CO2 via cell respiration. For higher level students, this process will be covered in greater depth in topic 8 of the IB Biology syllabus. CO2 can also be transferred from autotrophs to primary, secondary and tertiary consumers through the food chain via predation. Eventually, all organisms die, at which point their fixated CO2 is released into the atmosphere by decomposition, conducted by saprotrophs and detrivals. For aquatic organisms, such as marine mollusks, their soft body parts contain calcium carbonate, which decompose and fossilise, leaving calcium carbonate deposits on the seabed, known as limestone. At any point, this limestone can then re-dissolve when reacting with H2CO3 and release CO2 into the atmosphere, called acidification. If other dead organisms fall into the seabed, anaerobic conditions impede decomposition so that matter is only partially decomposed. If this process repeats atop of pyrus rock, there is a greater buildup of pressure and heat, causing chemical changes to occur, known as fossilization. Eventually, this leads to the formation of oil and gas. A similar process can occur on land, particularly in bogs and swamps with waterlogged soil. This soil is acidic and anaerobic, so matter is only partially decomposed and accumulates to form peat. Over time, this peat is buried under sediment, where it is fossilised through compression and heating to form coal. Another process that occurs in bogs and swamps, included in the IB syllabus, is methanogenesis. This is a natural process by which methanogenic archaeans break down peat in anaerobic conditions, such as swamps, landfills and muddy lakes, to produce methane. Let's go through it now. Firstly, Bacteria convert organic matter to organic acids, alcohol, hydrogen, and CO2. Bacteria then use organic acids and alcohol to produce acetate, CO2, and hydrogen. Archaeans can then convert CO2, hydrogen, and acetate to produce methane via two processes. CO2 plus H2 goes to CH4 plus H2O, or CH3COOH, goes to CH4 plus CO2. It is important to note that while release of methane is considered negative for our atmosphere, it is oxidised to CO2 and water by oxidative radicals quickly, so the overall concentration of atmospheric methane is low. Therefore, more concerning with our current society is the release of CO2 through anthropogenic burning of coal, oil and natural gas, named fossil fuels. This process of combustion defined as the heating of organic matter in aerobic conditions to produce CO2 and water, occurs naturally in grasslands. Anthropogenic processes such as increased rainforest clearing, sugarcane harvesting, or energy production, have heightened this natural process, contributing to the premature release of CO2 from such organisms. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.